Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and today we're reviewing the new Hellraiser movie, 2022, on Hulu. Now, this weekend, Jay and I will be filming a... Well, we're doing it tonight, but you'll see it this weekend. We've got a full spoiler review coming up with both of us. I have no idea what Jay thought about it yet, so we'll find out tonight. And then after it's released to you guys, we'll have an in-depth spoiler review. But this is going to be a non-spoiler review for the new Hellraiser movie and all the dark, sweet, suffering fucking fixins that are inside of it. So let's go trick-or-treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go red pumpkin head on VHS, cause Halloween never ends, Halloween never ends, Halloween never ends, yeah. Now, the plot of the new Hellraiser movie, I'll be very vague about it and keep it very simple. There's this girl who's addicted to drugs and she's dating probably a piece of shit named Drew. And they come into possession of a box of Satan's ass play toys, which is what we know as the lament configuration, the little famous Hellraiser puzzle box. Obviously, you know what happens next. Shit gets dark, shit gets weird. But this time we're joined by this new character named Voight, who's this handsome Al Pacino looking some bitch, really good actor. And he's super obsessed with the lore and whatnot of the Cinnabon of the lament configuration of how this whole thing works and he plays a central role in this and it all gets mixed together into a gigantic supreme pizza of satan's dark fucking joys so the big question everybody's going to ask about this movie is how was pinhead or the priest the priestess how how did that whole thing work out and before i give you guys my answer let me tell you how i felt about it when i saw that the casting was made that it was going to be a female this time and I thought it was awesome. I actually thought it was really cool because, again, in the original novels, it wasn't explained that it was a guy or anything like that. As a matter of fact, it had a, a female-sounding voice to it. It was never said what gender this thing was. So it makes total sense if we're not going to bring Doug Bradley back for this character that you would go that route. And also, women scare me way more than men do. <laughs> so, I mean, I live with three of them. So I was excited for it. I, th I think it makes total sense. It's not one of those meaningless gender swaps just for the sake of it that, that so many people complain about. This makes total sense to me. And to that, I'll say both can actually be true in this situation. Number one, Jamie Clayton did a great job as the priestess. And they did a good job placing this character in certain spots spots where they were it was freaky as hell like you would just look out into a courtyard and then there they would be just standing there fucking looking at you and make you want to shit your pants the voice didn't do as much as i thought it was going to do i thought the voice was really going to knock it out of the part it was fine but the film still missed doug bradley as pinhead himself and that's that's no knock to jamie clayton or the filmmakers or anything like that but there was something about having pinhead and the way that they let doug bradley go or he just, they really let that character chew the scenery and had some crazy lines and be super animated that they, this character doesn't really do. You know, there's, there's some good lines in there. There's some good dialogue. Uh, it's not bad by any means, but there's just something about that character that, that this film really does miss at the end of the day. And I'm not sure how to go forward with that. What I hope they do. I'm not saying this character can't be that cool. Just wasn't really given the opportunity to shine. Like there was screen time, but there was no like over the top lines and like really scenery for this character to chew the way that they would let Doug Bradley do that. And Hey, I mean, it's to be expected. It's one of the coolest horror characters of all time. There's just something scarier to me about the old school human element of, of Bradley's showmanship and the way that character was presented as the leader of these freaky butt creatures of the night. The Cenobites were cool, although I will say that the ones we saw in the trailers were the coolest of the ones we got. The Chatterer was really done well. That was cool and, and really shines. I say shines and definitely probably gets more screen time than any of the other ones. I thought the Chatterer was really cool. Um, the, the, the mask, the one that we saw with like the, the freaky face, I could have done with definitely more of that. It was definitely one of the cooler ones. And one thing I'll say about this film as a whole is it's very rewatchable. Like once the film hits the midway point, there's a lot of stuff that happens and a lot of stuff that I look forward to go back and really slowing down and looking at like the Cenobites and the way they look and, and all the, the specific designs of these new Cenobites and the freaky ass shit that's going on in their bodies. They had some cool looks to them, but there's just so much happening. They don't really slow it down and explain those stories. And obviously they can't, but it's going to add to the rewatch quality of the movie for sure. There's got to be a ton of stuff you'll see second, third viewing that you don't see the first time around, but they look cool. They did a good job with them, but again, mask and chatter were definitely the coolest ones. And I look forward to seeing them. That's another thing that I look forward to sequels for is to really seeing some of these Cenobites get fleshed out a little more. 
If anything, uh, I could say that I wish the movie actually would have went away from the main characters a little bit and focused a little bit more on the Cenobites. Now, they get screen time. They're on there a bunch. Don't get me wrong. But they're just way more interesting to me than these lead characters, which leads us into one of the main problems that I had with the movie is that the leads, and I know for a Hellraiser movie specifically, the characters, sometimes the lead characters are going to be very, very flawed. But that being said, I wasn't a huge character of the lead, Riley. Uh, not the actress, but just the character, the way that they wrote her, because she just... A, she wasn't just very likable to me. B, she made some really terrible decisions. Like in one case when, when a very important character goes missing, something awful may have happened. Instead of helping or, or putting any work in whatsoever, possibly, she's like, I'm just going to go fuck my boyfriend. And you're like, what? And then they make it this love scene and you're like, I don't... I don't like this person very much. I think her and her boyfriend Trevor probably get more screen time than anybody in the movie, and honestly, I just didn't find the characters very interesting. The gore, the gore is there. Uh, however, I don't get the same I need a shower afterwards feeling that I would get when I would watch Hellraiser. It's a different kind of gore. It's a much cleaner gore. Like, it's still gross. It's still there. It's just way less... I don't know. There's just something, like, gooier about the original Hellraiser. But you get to this, and it's it's... Obviously, they use today's technologies to their advantage, and it looks good, and they did a good job with the gore. There's a satisfactory amount of gore in this movie. Uh, there's there's a, several ooey gooey moments that really make you be like, ah, fuck it. You know what I mean? And you need those in a Hellraiser movie. And what they do with some of this stuff is very, very inventive. There, there's one specific thing that I'll just call the treasure chest floss from hell. Uh, and when you see the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, that is just, it's the way it's explained is actually grosser than what's happening. When they explain to you what's going on with this machine, you're like, oh, fuck. That is literally the most painful thing I can possibly think of. They, they put a lot of effort into the devices and the way that they kill people and things like that. And you really appreciate that when it comes to a Hellraiser movie. And another thing that's really good about the movie is it just feels at home in this universe. They really captured the essence of the dark, twisted S&M fashion show fucked up goddamn bakery that is a, a good Hellraiser movie. You feel like you're in that universe. It feels dark and twisted. That the, Between the cinematography and the music and the way it's all laid out, amazing job with that. Weirdly, it also felt a little Candyman-ish. I don't know if that's just the setting or whatever, but it felt a little bit like the original Candyman in a weird way. Just the vibes from it. Is the new movie scary? Yes and no. If you've never seen a Hellraiser movie before, this might scare the tits off of you. But for those of us who are used to what to expect in this fucked up universe, it's probably not going to have you cowering in any corners or anything like that. It's more of the same thing. It's just some parts more impressive than we've seen definitely in, in most of the sequels. One of my favorite things the movie did was add the character of Voight. This character, and again, I mentioned before, he's like an Al Pacino type character. He's this handsome, charismatic piece of shit. And the things his character brings... Uh, he, he is a vessel for all these new sort of additions or explanations, if you want to put it that way, of the lament configuration of how it works, how the Cenobites work, things like that. L the, the many layers that they keep mysterious and strange and kind of confusing, but also just give you that extra little bit of information that says like, oh, that sounds really cool. I want to see what that one fucking does, you know? And again, it adds to the rewatchability. This movie's very rewatchable, in my opinion. I can't wait to go back and look at it again before we do our spoiler review. But that character brings a lot to it, and I like what they did with that and where that went for sure so overall i feel like hellraiser was a resounding success at the end of the day for a franchise that desperately needed a well-oiled push into the future i think that they did that successfully here and david bruckner who said before that he wants to make more sequels in this franchise because now he kind of has the inner workings of it together and he feels like they could do even better going forward i really hope that they do and the way that this story unfolds the way it all works out it is wide open for uh, another franchise to take place here. And I'm not I'm not talking about how it ends or anything like that, uh, but just the way that the lore is expanded upon a little bit here and there, this, this is begging for sequels, just the way it all works out. And I really hope that they do that. Now, this wasn't a perfect movie by any means. Again, the first half of the movie, the time spent on the leads, who I just did not find that interesting, really kind of siphoned a lot of the joy that I had from the first half of the movie. But the second half of the movie, when we really get into it and we get into the lore and we get into the Cenobites and we get into the sucking, fucking and touching, you know what I mean? The goddamn sweet suffering. Uh, it works and it's clean and it looks good and they just did a good job with it. So I'm I am absolutely pleased. So Hellraiser at the end of the day, it's going to be a 7.5 out of 10 for me. But that is a score. Again, this is such a rewatchable movie with so many different aspects to it. There's a lot happening here in the second half of the movie. It's a score that could absolutely change for me up or down going forward. And maybe we'll find out if it does this weekend when we do our sports the review for it but no tears please we've just begun the sweet suffering of halloween horror month thank you guys for watching i love your fucking faces and i hope you have a great day
Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, but suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS. Cause Halloween never ends, Halloween never ends, Halloween never ends. Yeah.